here's my setup. Here's my setup. And can I just say, this question is a question that's um, a make or break on the setup, which is why you might have started off and you're like, okay, why why am I not getting anywhere? Or why why does it look so awful? Okay, how does it come out? So let's begin. Slowly think through it, and there's a couple of yeah, kind of weird ways that you can have a look at this, which, which will, number one, simplify things for you, and number two, well, actually allow you to solve it. So, here's a scenario. A is eight kilometers north, and B is six kilometers east of O. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a second, right? Now, I've told you guys before, and I've, I've modeled for you, that generally, as I read the question, I start to put information on. Now, I'm gonna do exactly that. There's a reason why, though, I have two diagrams, because as it happens, in this case, just doing that flat out is actually very unhelpful, and I will show you why in a second. Okay, so we've got eight kilometers here and six kilometers here. Okay, raise your hand if your diagram looks exactly like mine so far. Yeah, okay, all right, good, yeah, no, no problem. Uh, like I said, this is the way that I generally will approach something. I'm reading and I'm writing, okay? Two men start walking at the same time from A and B, respectively, toward O at four kilometers per hour each. So at this point, at this point, here's the next piece of information that I put on here. Okay, this guy is walking this way, and this guy is walking that way, and they both have a speed, right? So I, I say, oh, okay, this guy's going that way at four kilometers per hour, and this guy is also going this way at four kilometers per per hour, and then I've got all the information that the question has given me. That's it, there's, there's no other data, okay? Then it says, find their distance apart after t hours. Okay, then you pause, and you look, and you're kind of in trouble, okay? Because when you have a look at this, well, I know I have speeds on there, I know I have rates, but as I've constructed the diagram, everything on my diagram is constant. Do you notice that? It's like, look, this distance, it is six, and this distance, it is eight, and that's what it is. There's no variables involved, okay? So right away, like most people work out, okay, well, I want a distance between A and B, so you, you draw that line in there, okay? A really lucky line, okay? And I'm like, okay, there's the distance I want. I'll call that X, okay? But at this particular second, all I know is that this is a six, eight, 10 triangle, right? So I know they start off 10 kilometers apart, but then I, I don't know anything else apart from that. I don't have any tools to work out how are things changing. And the change is the key. Like, I need to work out after T hours, not just at a particular <coughs> moment in time. Okay? Do you want to raise a question? Or? Oh, but can't you just go like eight, eight times 14? So okay, like now, and when you say, can't you just, I'd like to suggest that that's actually a huge conceptual leap. So let me, let me rewind, okay? okay? Like I said, this is kind of a standard way to approach things because you're reading information and you're just putting it onto your diagram, okay? But as I've just mentioned, this is actually a very unhelpful way to construct the question and um, how you're going to solve it. So let me begin again. I've got A and I've got B. But what I'm going to try and do is bake into this diagram the fact that things can change, okay? So when we think about this guy here, right? I know at a particular moment, it's eight, right? Actually, when I start, right? In other words, when the time is zero, there's my variable, right? Time will progress and these guys will move, okay? Do you remember when we started looking at the, um, at the pieces of paper and we folded them and so on, right? There's lots of different things that are changing, for example, this guy's moving, this guy's moving. But one thing is changing underneath, right? If you want to think about it that way, this question must have a parameter, right? There must be one number that if I change that, everything else changes in response. And in this question, it's time. And that's why the first part A says, find their distance apart after T hours. Time is a very, very common parameter, which I actually mentioned to you at the beginning when we started parametrics, okay? So therefore, remembering that this thing is changing and it's getting smaller, at least it's getting smaller for a while, eventually it will get bigger, okay? This starts at eight, it starts at eight, and it drops, right? It starts at eight, and it reduces by some amount, okay? And the amount increases as time increases, right? Well, after the first hour, it should be four, and then after the second hour, it should be zero, 
And then after the third hour, it'll be negative four, like I've gone in this direction now, and then negative eight, and so on. Now when you have a look at these guys, eight, and then four, and then zero, and then negative four, dot, 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 right? This is a linear function, isn't it? Okay. Uh, it also happens to be an AP, but we're trying to think about this as in a continuous form, uh, because I actually do have numbers all the way in between here. So if I have a straight line, a linear function, I start at eight, and each time I'm going down by four. <coughs> So therefore, that is my statement for the distance AO, right? And um, some people will see that very, very quickly. Most of us will not, and most of us kind of need to be, have our hand held to be like, okay, this is a completely different conception of thinking about that distance from this. This is variable now. Okay, this is a variable. Once you have that established, you can see it doesn't take that much thought to our imagination to call this 6 minus 14, okay? So now that I have both of these distances expressed in terms of parameter, time, now I can get AB also expressed in terms of the parameter, right? There are all these things changing, but they all depend on time. So I'm going to put my line in there. Now, according to Pythagoras, I would say <clears throat> the square of the hypotenuse is equal to, and then I've got these guys, right? The sum of the squares of the shorter two sides. Okay? Now ordinarily, therefore, I would say this actual distance, this actual distance, is the square root of all of this. Okay? Now in fact, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to write that on because that is what the distance is. Square root of But let's just pause for a second. We have two reasons to pause at this moment. The first reason to pause is what are we going to do with this thing in a minute? What's, what's the point? Yeah. Differentiate. Okay, I'm going to need to differentiate this because I want to make that a minimum. I want it to be the smallest, okay? By the way, um, I kind of implied it before, but a lot of people read this question, they're like, well, isn't the smallest when they reach O? But if you have a look at the question, there's nothing that tells you in the question that they actually stop at O, right? So this guy's going to just keep on going past, and this guy's going to keep on going past, and they're not just going to end there and the distance will be zero, okay? So, number one, I'm going to have to differentiate. Now, that, that looks <coughs> terrible. Like, do you really want to differentiate that? All of that to the power of a half? I mean, we can do it, but gee, it's going to be a mess. Is, is there another way? Right? Sometimes there is not, but I might as well ask, can I work out another way? Okay? Did you want to oh, raise something? No, I just don't understand where the maximum yeah, I'm not quite there yet. Um, you can see it's partly, well, I need to ask the next question in order to get to the math myth, okay? Minsu. Okay, wait. Yeah, okay, so I can, uh, I can take these guys, right, underneath here, and expanding will be helpful. Like, it'll, it'll mean I don't have two separate terms underneath here. That will be, um, yeah, it'll turn into, well, it's just going to be a quadratic of some kind, right? So that's, that's better. That is objectively better, okay? But it's still kind of gross, okay? Now, there's a second reason. It's in the question itself. Did you read the whole question? Did you notice? You should always, when you've got multiple parts, you should always read a whole question because remember, where you're going to go will kind of chart how you do the earlier parts. So you already noticed this part B, which says, hence find when and where the men are nearest to each other, which means when is this the smallest? So there's, there's your max min, right? But then underneath, they very helpfully give you a clue. They say, note, to minimize the distance, that's, that's this number here, to minimize the distance, is equivalent to minimizing the distance squared. What's that about? Okay, so let's think about this, right? If I gave you a table of values, okay, um, and I said, okay, at a certain time, what's your distance away from, you know, a point, like say the origin? Okay. Now suppose I have some weird function here where according to time progressing, I'll put another one just for I'm going to say, your distance, it just fluctuates all, all over the place. Okay. So suppose the distance, I don't know, it starts off at imaginatively 8 and then it goes up to 10 and then it goes down to 5 and 1 and up to 6 and 7. Okay. So if you have some values, right, you don't need to differentiate to work out where the minimum is. It's right there. Okay. But this is if you know what the values are, right? Over here, I have things as a function. I don't actually know what the numbers are. I could work them out, but boy, is that a blunt tool to use on this. I, I want to use calculus, right? Now, I don't have the distance in a nice form. I've got the distance in a gross form with a square root in it, okay? But if I square this guy,
if I have an expression for the distance squared, right, can you see that finding the minimum distance squared is really the same as finding the minimum distance? Let me show you, okay? Um, th these are easy numbers. So the distance squared will be 64, 100, 25, 1, 36, and 49, okay? Now, if what I'm after is, tell me when, tell me when I have the shortest distance, okay? Answering that question is saying the same as telling me when the square of the distance is also a minimum, right? Do you see the minimum here corresponds to the minimum here, which will give you the same time either way, okay? Now, that's a bit weird. Why, why do the distance squared? Well, I hope I tried to justify it with the first point, because I don't want to find the distance by itself. It's gross. I want to avoid that if I possibly can, and I can, okay? So, what am I going to do? Um, I have an expression for the distance squared, there it is, okay, that's the actual thing I'm after, okay? So therefore, I'm going to differentiate this, the whole thing, the squared thing, with respect to time, okay? That's what I'm going to do. Okay? So uh, that is my answer to part A, that's, that's the distance apart after t hours. I suppose we could, uh, the suggestion was to simplify, uh, what happens when you expand everything under the square root? Minus one, one, two. Say that again, 100? Minus 112 yeah. t plus 32. Okay, so that's the distance. 